So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ahmadu wa salli ala rasul al-Kareem, amma ba'd. Um, today I want to talk about something very important. Um, Muslims in America are reaching a very dangerous line, very dangerous position. Um, you know, we're all towing the mainstream line, uh, which basically started with uh, the book called They Dare to Speak Out, which told Muslims you have to participate in in American politics. And just as the Jews took, you know, had an influence, uh, therefore, if Muslims get involved, they'll have an influence. And this is a good thing for Muslims. And uh, but when you look at the facts and you look at the numbers and you look at really the situation in detail what you'll find is that the quran is correct and uh paul paul is wrong paul finley i think his name is so let me start something very basic and this is i'm going to start off with those people who really believe in the quran and like to take quran as a guidance i'm specifically speaking to uh, ICNA, because ICNA claims to be an organization that wants Khilafah and claims that uh, it wants Iqamatuddin because of its history with Jamaat Islami in Pakistan. Uh, and it also claims to be a organization that's sticking very closely to the Quran. So I want to start with the Quran and then I'll go into more of the uh, semi-academic aspects of things a little bit later. Now, number one, everybody knows the Democratic Party symbol is the donkey, okay? Now, we have to naturally ask ourselves the question, what does the Qur'an tell us about the donkey? And also, what does the Qur'an tell us about the elephant, which is the Republican Party symbol? So, I would like to show you two parts of the Qur'an, okay? Uh, just to begin with, and then we'll go into more of an academic uh, dialogue, okay? So, in Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, talking about uh, Luqman alayhi salatu wassalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 12, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُكْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ We indeed gave Luqman alayhi salatu wassalam hikmah an ishkul lillah so that he would thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the beginning of morality, is shukr. And then in the next ayah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the foundation of morality is وَإِذْ قَالَ لُكْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِيذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Oh, my son, he said, I, advising him. Oh, my son, don't make any partners to Allah. Then in the next ayah, ayah number 14, The morality of family, the institution of having a family, the institution of marriage, the morality of respecting your parents, having adab towards your parents is mentioned in ayah number 14. How to deal with conflict in those issues in which your morality is, is fundamental and your your morality cannot be compromised. وَإِن جَاهَدَكَ أَن تُشْرِكْ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا And if they do jihad against you for that which you have no knowledge, then don't obey them. وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيَّ Follow the one who calls towards me. Okay? So, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, يَا بُنَيَّ it, oh my son, in min khardalin fatakun fi sahratin aw fi samawati aw fil ard. If there's a moral action, judgment, thought taken even at the most minute level, you're responsible for it on the day of judgment. Completely opposite to the Democratic Party, atheism, liberalism, all that. Ya buniya qim al-sala wa amur bil ma'rufi wa yanha anil munkar. The Democratic Party does not believe in Amr bil Maruf, Nahyan al Munkar, right? I mean, they have this idea of social justice, which is uh, why many of the minorities join the Democratic Party because they have, they're supposed to be the party of social justice, but they've not delivered for the black people, they've not delivered for the Mexicans, they've only delivered that in the case of actual liberalism, like, for example, the LGBT community and so on and so forth, okay? Now, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah, talking about morality in ayah number 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقْصِدْ فِي مَشِيكْ Be moderate in your stride. This is moderate in everything. Don't go lightning speed into 
politics, and then you find yourself in a difficult situation. And try to lower your voice. Okay. In Ankar al Aswati la Sautul Hamir, indeed, the most repulsive of voices is the voice of the donkey. Indeed, the Democratic Party is the most repulsive of the voices. The Democratic Party's noise, the bring of, is like the bring, their noise is like the donkey. That's, yani, they are calling to everything that is, that is against the fundamentals of Islam. Now, what does Islam teach us in terms of unity of humanity? It tells us, start with the people that are closest to you. Start with the, the good Christians who are not, who haven't nationalized Christianity, like the Republican Party, the elephant, Ashabul Fil, okay? But they are a people who are, who stand with the morals of Islam. That's why you're allowed to marry a Christian girl, for example, because Hopefully, if she's a good, true Christian and she goes to her church and she listens to a priest, as the Fuqaha say, then you know, then you have a moral basis to be together. So, first of all, the Muslims should find unity amongst themselves. Then the Muslims, instead of looking at the political agenda, you have to look at who can you have a natural alliance with, which is what the Muslims have not done. They have not looked to the Orthodox Christian community. They have not looked to the Catholic communities. They have not looked to the traditional Christian communities in America. They have not looked to even the, some of the Presbyterian communities. They have not, they have not built alliances with the ones that the Quran would tell us that you need to build an alliance with. But rather, they've gone to the opposite, opposite end of the spectrum to build an alliance with people that we have no fundamental, uh, values that we share other than the fact that we're in the same boat because it just happens to be a boat we seem to randomly have chosen uh, with no rational thought to it. Okay, so this is the first uh, portion of the Qur'an that I wanted to share. Now please keep in mind, this surah is the twin surah, surah of Surum. Okay, Surum is the surah that is right before this and it begins with what? Alif la mim. And this surah also begins with Alif la mim, Surah Luqman. Okay, and so uh, Alif La Mim Sutur Rum and Alif La Mim Sutur Luqman. This is also interesting because when you study the issue of Luqman, who is he? He's the one who wrote the Aesop's fables. I'm not going into that detail right now, but just mentioning that he is the one who had a moral, one of the key people, you can say, who had a moral impact on the Western world. And so these two surahs, in a sense, they have a link with each other, even though a room, and so the room is not where referring to Western uh, Europe. It is more referring to the Eastern Europe side. Okay, I want that to be clear. And But in that sense, um, it is also a twin surah because Surah Luqman is referring to something that has had a moral impact on Western uh, Europe. Okay. okay. N the other part of the Quran that I want to share in this regard is in Sutul Jum'ah, okay, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the example of the donkey, okay, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا التَّوْرَاتِ The example of those people who are to asked to carry the Tawrat, the teachings of Tawrat, the morality of Tawrat, the uncompromising rules of Tawrat, ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا Then they didn't carry them, كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ Their example is like the Himar. They were supposed to be, because the Democratic Party is mostly Jewish, as we all know, most people who are in Jewish vote in the Democratic Party. Kamathalil Himar, their example is like the donkey, Yahmilu Asfara, that just carries with it Asfara. Uh, one is, it carries with it pages, enlightened pages, like the Constitution, a good idea, but it doesn't do anything with it. It just makes a lot of noise. What a miserable example for a people who have denied the ayat of Allah. Who are those? Those are the Democratic Party, which is the party of the atheists. It's the Democratic Party. Why are Muslims in a party that is in all that represents everything opposite to Islam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't 
guide people that are zalimin, that are wrongdoers. This means that if you are in with the donkey, if you're with the party of the donkey, you are amongst the zalimun. You don't want the hukum of Allah. You don't want the morality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to bring into society. You're helping and the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not that this is what it is in terms of fatwa but this is what the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whoever walks with the zalim, with the wrongdoer okay, to give him strength he has come out of Islam. So, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, uh, Brother Umar Suleiman and Isna and Ikna and all these Muslim organizations that are so democratic in their view don't even realize, as I will soon show, the type of damage that they're doing to the Muslim youth that are watching Muslim scholars stand side by side with people that represent uh, morality completely on the other end. You know, if you look at, for example, Surah Al-Abbas wa Tawalla, what do you find there? The Prophet was told, oh, we'll talk to you, just get rid of these poor people, right? Because it's a matter of association. Association has an impact. And so you're putting your eyes blindly and not caring about the youth that are watching Muslims getting on stage with gays and lesbians, promoting people like Umar al-Han who, who represents everything antithetical to Islam. I was very impressed with Umar, Umar al-Han in the beginning because I thought here's a muhajjiba, you know, she represents Islam and she said a few things. That, but this is like so like deceptive, so deceptive. And inshallah ta'ala I'm going to talk about this in more detail. So this is my Quranic view of the situation. I take the donkey to be quite literally the donkey mentioned in the in the Quran. In a sense, it has those attributes. If you have if you have the attributes of a donkey, your symbol will be like a donkey. When you look at the attributes of the donkey in the Quran, what do you find? They have all the same attributes. They're the anti-moral party. They're the anti-God party. They're the anti-institution uh, of marriage party. And those are the people that Muslims have aligned themselves with, right? And so you're going to say, oh, this is the lesser of the two evils. No. There, there comes a point that poison A and poison B, it doesn't even matter if it's poison A or poison B. Are you really going to cho choose between poison A and poison B? Well, then let me tell you what will be the result of that. Over here, I just want to quickly mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabi fil. Have you not seen the, how Allah dealt with the people of the elephant? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is going to deal with the Republican Party. Okay? The Republican Party is symbol is, you know, the elephant, right? And so uh, where this is the, uh, the Republican Party. The, the, the Republican Party. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right, uh, about the Republican Party. Did we not make all their plans go wrong? They keep planning the great American century. They get they keep planning great wars. They represent the right wing Christian like Abraha did in the in the time before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right? They they represent all these things, and that's fine. But Allah said they will not succeed. So you got the 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 Democratic Party on one side and the elephant on the other side. But because Muslims are more interested in Muslimism and Muslim power than they're interested in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, as a whole, we're more interested in power than we're interested in uh, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the result is what? The result is that we're making wrong decisions for the future. Now, let me just... Uh... Now, after World War II, many Jews came to America and there was a vacuum in America for many reasons. But also keep in mind that the banks were also, um, you can say, uh, lending money, uh, you know. And so the Jews come to America. There is a vacuum in America. There's an intellectual vacuum in America. They take up that space. But what happens as a result? They're extremely successful as Jews, as individuals. But what happens to their Jewish identity, right? And this is the thing that the Muslims are not, paying attention to. So, as you know, uh, Alan Dertzavoyts wrote the book The Vanishing Jew, which I'll talk about in a second. But here it is. Jewish communities of America and France created liberal modernity. They became modern. They became just like the average American. They stopped caring about what it means to be a Jew. They've stopped caring about their identity. In fact, now they can't even agree what it means to be a Jew. Does it mean that you follow the Torah or does it mean that you are just 
Jew by lineage. So it's no accident they're dissolving. This is what happens in a political liberal democracy. What happens in a political liberal democracy is you get dissolved under under the pressures of the culture because there's the, the political structure and there's a political culture. And when you join a party, you join a dominant, a more dominant political culture and you get dissolved in that. That's what's happened to many of the scholars that are working towards, you know, trying to help the Muslims, but they're not helping the Muslims because they're not really doing the work of social justice because the most unjust thing a person can do, the most unjust thing a person can do is to compromise when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Compromise in the thought. And you may be saying, I don't do that. But yes, you do that when you stand with people that do that. You know? And so then you're like, okay, but how do we then negotiate? Well, I'll talk about that. But first, you've got to understand that what we're doing and what we've been doing and then what we've been doing for more than 70 years in the Muslim lands themselves. The Muslim parties, whether it be Ikhwan al-Muslimin or jamaat islami in Pakistan and Bangladesh and Muslim parties, whether they be across, whether it was the Muslim party in Algeria or whether it was the Muslim party in Iraq, all the Islamic parties have within this liberal democracy system they have failed and failed and failed so what to speak of muslims that are minority with a dominant culture and and and, and, and that leaves us even more in a, in a parallel so you have in a more of a dangerous situation you have to ask yourself one basic question what did the prophet do and that is the questions muslims in america haven't asked because they've been compromised they've been compromised it's that simple Okay, we've gone the direction that we were expected to go. This whole thing that happened with Umar Ilhan, it is exactly the way that they expected things to go. I mean, it is no wonder that they allowed a Muslim lady that does hijab but then dances with uh, gays and lesbians, uh, you know, to, to win the political scene. Okay, so... Alan Dertzavoyd, the Jewish lawyer, the famous, wrote about the vanishing American Jew. Now, let me tell you about the vanishing American Jew. The, Ameri the vanishing American Jew is the idea, look, the first generation comes with their religion. The first, then the first gen, uh, the, I mean, the, uh, the parents that come with their religion, their identity and everything. And then the first generation loses the, you know, culture and or they lose the language. So the children that are Jewish, they their parents knew Yidd Yiddish, uh, and the children don't know Yiddish. And then the next generation after that, they don't know what the Jewish culture is, the Jewish holidays are, they don't practice them, they hear about that, but it's just very cultural, the religion becomes oblique, and all that remains of any religion at that point in, by, in, by the first generation is, you know, some of the, the celebrations, you can say. And then the third generation completely loses even the culture. Now, that is what's happening with the Muslims. Muslims come here, they, their parents, they know Swahili, they know Urdu, they know Arabic, whatever language they know. Their children don't know how to speak Urdu. Their uh, children don't know how to speak Swahili or Arabic anymore. Well, then you've lost, begun to lose the culture. The next generation of that after that is not going to even know what the culture is. And the next generation after that is not going to know what your religion is. That is what you're dealing with. And by jumping into, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا You know, وَغْذِذْ مِنْ صَوْتِكْ Right? That uh, uh, don't, don't be so quick uh, in, in anything that you do, like we have in Muslims in America. We've just jumped into politics without realizing what we're jumping into. But the result is what? The result is our own identities are compromised. And this is not something that I'm saying that's new. This is what the social scientists, many of them, have been saying. This is what happens, right? Especially if you come in with a religion that is uncompromising, that's supposed to be your identity, you get completely compromised. And that party, that cultural, that political culture no longer really represents you. We don't even know what the Democratic Party represents other than the gays and lesbians. Certainly doesn't do anything for the black people, the Mexican people. Certainly doesn't do anything for the Muslims. But yet Muslims want to vote Democratic Party. You know, somehow after 9-11, they shifted their vote from the Republican to the Democrat. And uh, lo and behold, well, we were voting Republican, which in a sense is better because Allah said their plans will never work against you anyway, in that sense, okay? Uh, I'm not talking about participation in the system. That's a whole different discussion. But you, you uh, participate in the system, 
you were voting de Republicans and they didn't make you happy. And then now you vote Democratic. And how far are you going to take this uh, liberalism? OK, so now you're compromising your next generation. It's as simple and clear as that. OK, but it's that's not all. OK, that's not all. Um, so uh, over here, uh, I just, you know, uh, there's a lot of discussion of why most Jews are Democratic. OK, and uh, and most Jews uh, in America, most of them don't are not very religious. Nearly seven in ten U.S. Jews think Republican Party holds anti-Semitic views. So this is the situation in America. Uh, now, this is a very important. Uh, I have a hard way, a hard time saying this word. Anomi is the idea that when there's a political culture, for example, is a theory that most people who strive to achieve culturally recognized goals. When we take part in politics, right, as Muslims, we, we are doing it to achieve our own cultural goals. But that's not what happens. A state of anomie develops when access to these goals is blocked to the entire groups of people or individuals. The result is deviant behavior characterized by rebe rebellion, retreat, ritualism, innovation, or conformity. Unfortunately, what Muslims are doing is that they're conforming, right, to this uh, um, this system, you can say. Um, so now, let me share with you uh, one more thing here. The dysfunctional paradox of identity politics in liberal democracies, right? So let me just read, uh, just mention a few things. Number one, uh, even Francis Fukuyama, right? He doesn't believe in this liberal democracy in the sense that what happens, okay? You become societies of singularities, okay? You lose uh, your soul when you participate in this system. Because especially in a, in a liberal party, where there's gays and lesbians and all sorts of peoples and all sorts of minorities with and 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 everyone has their own goals but yet no one's goals are realized right this just leaves you into a very uh, a, 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 an internal cultural war situation within the party one one could say that identity of liberal democracy is in crisis because it itself produced an identity pluralism that is increasingly displacing political compromise and decision making as a negotiation of plural interests meaning okay one way to take what he's trying to say is that look liberal democracy is in crisis because it's in it's it there's an I, there's an identity of uh, a plurality of identities and this is what the the democratic party has done to the muslims is it's given us we when we participate in a democratic in the in in the Repub in the in the donkey in the in the democratic party when we participate in it we're not it's not just our identity that is being affected it's also the gays and also the atheists and also all the other groups right many many of them are good people and many aspects of the Democratic Party does stand for social justice. But when we look at a situation in Sharia, we look at the illa, what it will be the end result, what will be the impact of something. The impact to the youth is simply a message of compromise, a diluted version of Islam. It shows that, yes, maybe you're so like a uh, modern and, and, and thoughtful and progressive that you get to stand with all these people and still be Muslim. Well, yeah. That's when that happens. What happens? What is the message that is read in in the in the minds of the youth is is definitely very negative. Okay. Um, ethos no longer coincides with the identity of the demos. So the ethos, the ethics are, are of of the of the of the particular groups no longer coincides with the demos, uh, with the majority. Okay. So. Why am I saying this? Okay, I'm saying this so that you understand that we have embarked now on a very, very dangerous path, dear members of Isna and dear members of Ikna and dear Omar Suleiman and dear all the ulama that are pushing this kind of like integrated integration into the political system. This is not the only option we have. This is a very dangerous option we're going into. Especially for a reader of Quran, I would say it's very clear that it's a very dangerous option because they, it's just bad enough as it is. 
But then it becomes worse when you consider that the Quran specifically says that, look, the Judeo-Christian society will not be okay with you because they've already become friends. And so they already have their agendas. Their agenda is already set. And anyone who thinks the agenda is not already set is just uh, doesn't know the history of World War II and what happened after that, really, and doesn't understand that, you know, who, who's rolling the, the bank money, okay? And so, you know, Surah Al-Qalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waddu, O Prophet, Waddu law tudhinu fayudhinun. O Prophet Muhammad, this is in Surah Al-Qalam, which is one of the first surahs given to the Prophet They would like you to compromise, O Nabi Muhammad So the, when you compromise your principles, then they will compromise. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that don't com there there is certain things you just can't compromise and by being part of the system and by being part of the democratic party and by thinking that the democratic party is going to do something for you even though it's never delivered for any other minority group right the only people that it's maybe delivered for is the atheists um it's delivered for the gays and lesbians but what do law tudhinu fa yudhinun if you compromise then what will happen then they will also come. But you have to compromise first. So they would compromise. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in ayah number 8 and ayah number 10? Ayah number 9, Allah is saying, They would like you to compromise so that they can compromise. But ayah number ten, 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first says, المكذبين, Don't obey the liars. The Democratic Party is sounds like a donkey because it lies. It makes a lot of noise for black people, makes a lot of noise for the Spanish people, makes a lot of noise for the minorities, but never delivers, except in a few cases, which has to do with a different agenda beyond being the pi uh, party of the minorities. فَلَا تُطَعِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ وَدُّوا لَوْ تُدْهِنُوا فَيُدْهِنُونَ وَلَا تُطَعِ الْكُلَّ حَلَّافِ مَحِينَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 10 again says, do not obey those people who have these qualities of they curse, they are backbiters, they spread slander, right? Preventer of good, transgressor and sin. Manna'in lil khayri, mu'tadin athim, right? Rude and fake. Uti' ba'da dhalika zanim. An kana dha malin wa banin. Just because they have money, they have power, they have a say, right? What, uh, and what is their attitude towards the, the Bible and to the Quran? وَإِذَا تُطْلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا And when our signs are recited to them, قَالَ They say, أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِ These are the stories of the old. Why are you, you know, talking about Quran? That's the party that you want to support. That the Quran is saying, Lord, don't do this. But it goes deeper than that. You see, when you look at the Quran, it goes deeper than that, right? Because... The Quran specifically says, do not expect approval from the Judeo-Christian civilization. So Muslims have to adopt a different method. What method? Well, look at the Prophet The Jews and the Christians, will, the Judeo-Christian political system. America is not Judeo-Christian as much as its political system is Judeo and Christian. So we have, you can say, options outside the political system, which are much, much better. The Jews and Christians will not be happy with you until, this is the shart, until you follow their millah, their way. Look, the guidance is the one Allah gave. You go any other way, you're not going to get guidance. So now think about this. Is this ayah referring to the situation we're in? That's the ends. That's the question you have to answer. Is America Judeo-Christian civilization? And then is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaking to that Judeo-Christian civilization? In another place, the self-righteousness of this political system that is a harmony of Judeo-Christian civilization. They say you will not enter Jannah unless you are a Jew or Christian. These are their wishes. Bring your proof if you're truthful. So for all the Muslims in, 
ISNA and ICNA and other institutions that have compromised themselves with the Democratic Party and Democratic vote. Uh, it's not going to take you anywhere. You're going into the rab into the lizard's hole. You know what the prophet said? You would follow the Jews shibran be shibran. You'll follow them hand span by hand span, and you're trying to do what they did now. You're trying to be in politics just like they were in politics. And what did their politics do to them? It dissolved their societies. It got it created the vanishing Jew. And what will be the end result of that? We have we're now getting into this where. You have problems in the Muslim community that Muslims are becoming atheists. We have problems in the Muslim community where people don't know their gender anymore. Okay, We have problems in the Muslim community with people being strong on their deen. Like these, these are signs that we are going in the wrong direction. Every Muslim community has people that are confused of their gender now. Never happened before. But you were part of that system that created that situation. You were part of that party. You're part of that structure and as well as that cultural political, uh, uh, that, uh, the, you know, the cultural political system, which is the Democratic Party. So shame on the Muslims that have led us to this, who didn't oppose this. And now what is happening? Isna and Ikna, they will not talk about gays and lesbians because what? They have compromised themselves with it. They will not hold national symposiums talking about this issue where Muslims are in a crisis and they will not talk about this crisis of the, of which pronoun you have. They won't talk about it in their masjids. They won't talk about it in their national forums. This next uh, ikna is, is not invention, uh, conventions that are happening. Why would we not talk about this when this is plaguing the Muslim world right now? When this is like the, the, the big new evil that's affecting the Muslim minds. Taking us down the lizard's hole. And so, really, you really have to see that, you know, what, you, what, what, is what you're doing rational? Right? We, what did we do? We Muslims, we heard this man who opposed Zionism in Congress, and he wrote the book, They Dare to Speak Out, People and Institutions Confront Israeli's Lobby, and Paul Finley, uh, then he tells the Muslims, hey, you need to go into politics too so that you can counter the Jewish voice. And so this is what everyone ran with. This is, this, this is the book, dear brothers and sisters, that is the Bible of Muslim political activism. No longer the Quran, no longer the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And we're in a very, very bad place that unless the national organizations at this point take some really strong steps we are jeopardizing the future of the Muslims in this country. And so this is partly what I wanted to share with you. Here, let me read this sentence. The fact that fundamentalist identity politics, when it, the politics is about identity, right? Which is what the Muslims as a subculture within America want to do such as those that can arise from a religious context or are represented in a right-wing populist, right-wing extremist mil milieu, milieu, can lead to an identity crisis in democracy because they challenge fundamental democratic values is widely recognized and will not be discussed further here. Meaning, when you hold on to, when your religious identity is one that is unwilling to compromise, that's what, then you can't really function in this system of democratic system. Okay. Does that mus mean Muslims should have no voice? No, I didn't say that. Does that Muslims, uh, does that mean, can, we can still do things at the local level? We can still do things at the, at the state level, I suppose, but we certainly, are wasting our time and our energy and our money and our resources doing anything at the national level because the agendas have been set. The dice has been cast. There's nothing you can do other than the best thing you can do right now is to come out because not coming out means you're going to affect the integrity of the collective identity and the identity of the future coming generations. So what's wrong if we're like the Amish people? If our, if we still, we, Amish people have been able to preserve their identity, have been able to preserve their, their religion and their identity. You know, so I'm, I'm using the example of the Amish people because it's a very good example that you don't have to be in politics to preserve your identity. Politics dilutes your identity because you have to, you have to then engage with people that are at the opposite end of the spectrum and 
we're no longer in a situation because when the Jews came here, they had sympathies of the Americans and they were bankrolled by the bankers. When you have come here, you've come here under an anti-Islamic, you, you're part of the, what they call the Islamophobia or the, the you know, the, 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 you are the sheep. You are the, 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 you're the scapegoat, so to say. You are the scapegoat. You are the one that is villainized. You're the one that is looked down upon. Okay. And so you don't have no political currency. And so now you're forced to be in the Democratic Party because you have no political currency, because you are a minority. And so my, you know, when it comes to special interest groups and minorities, the priority is always given to these special interest groups. And those special interest groups have way more money than you can imagine. You can't compete with them in the political world right now unless you convert a lot of people. But as of now, your situation, your practical situation is you can't compete with the majority. You cannot. You cannot compete with the money on the other side. Muslims don't have that type of funds. And so we have, but, and we have other priorities because of the type of group that we are. For us, our relationship should be building with, with Orthodox Christians, with traditional Christians, with good Christians. Our, we should be building alliances with people that are similar to us, not on the other extreme of the, of the spectrum. That is going to lead us down a lizard's hole, which is not going to end well. It's not going to end well. And the last thing that I want to uh, leave my brothers and sisters with is this verse of the Quran, because you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is watching, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sees dhulm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sees injustice, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sees who's part in participating in that injustice. And so, just a peek into the future. What we Muslims should be getting ready and should be our priority, absolute priority. I consider this ayah to be the most important ayah of the times. Ayah number 58 of Sutan Isra. In min qaryatin, there will be no town, there will be no city, there will be no place really. Illa nahnu muhlikuha, except we will destroy it. Qabla yawm al qiyamah, before the day of judgment. Aw mu'adhibuha, or we will severely punish the people in it. Adhaban shadida, with a severe punishment. كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْطُورًا And this is already written in the book. It's going to happen. And if you look further, there's indications of when this will happen. But I will tell you that as the world falls, the modern world falls. And as the cities fall, because the banana from 5,000 miles can't and no longer come to your city. And because gas from 6,000 miles can't come to your city. If we're not paying attention to really what's happening in the world and we are lost in the, you can say, the trends and the micro trends of society and not seeing the big picture. If we're not getting ready, if we're not getting Muslims ready for the big picture, dear members of ISNA and dear members of ICNA and all the other institutions, if you don't see that the world is running to the end of its course as it is today and that we're headed to a new type of world if you don't realize this and you don't see your cities deteriorating especially in america for example if you don't see that you're blind you're blind if you're still thinking about oh how are we going to make it fat and strong in this country and you don't realize that this country is slowly sliding backwards and that we're into an, not just an economic uh, crisis, but we're re reaching an economic, moral, political crisis like never seen in the history of this country. And it is all leading to chaos. Our foreign policy, our internal policies, they have led us or they're leading us to a dead end. And if Muslims are not aware of this and not ready for this they are going to suffer but if they are ready for this and then they are preparing for this and they are learning how to do farming and they're learning how to use the cross and bow and that they're learning how to do things on their own 
we have a crisis where there's a fifth nine every house. We have a crisis that there's a fifth nine every family. You know, we have a crisis uh, that people are more depressed, families breaking down, marriages breaking apart. And our priority, if it is in such a situation where you don't see the big picture of where the whole world is going, you don't see the fitnas in your own house. You don't see where the world is going and the whole world is beginning to collapse as it is. If you don't see that and you're still thinking, oh, we're going to make it, you're more interested in Muslim power than you're interested in what will help Islam. And we all Muslims in America, we're going to be, for injustice that has been done, we will be punished along with everyone else. Unless you do your toba and you get prepared to get ready to do what the Prophet ﷺ did, which you can see my other videos about. Inshallah, I'll end here. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa al-muslimina wa al-muslimat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.